he's not an individual in one village calling himself jesus that person should be taken to the hospital so that they check his mentors when i started making impact in ministry many years ago it was 1997 before i preached the message would there be another lucifer so i was just praying about because i saw things wrong in the church praying about it crying and all of that stuff so so the first encounter i had that qualified me to confront the error in church people don't think that you think that you, can, you just need to open your mouth and begin to shout against the error in church you will die before your time can i tell you something jesus is so jealous of his bride that if he has not permitted you don't talk about his bride Maybe at the course of this week, we'll teach about formation in the end time. I mean, some things I put on Facebook today about formation. So that you begin to value the essence for loyalty. Some of the things I wrote today, if you see all those bloggers, YouTubers who are just screaming about, whatever they are saying is right. Calling out the men and of God who are killing the moves of God, who are practicing dark things. They are doing a good thing. But can I tell you something? I don't think most of them have the permit to speak about the bride of Christ. In our generation, we may not understand what I want to say because marriages have crumbled. There's no longer genuine love and all of that stuff. But in a season of genuine love, let me tell you how our marriage with Christ is. The bride of Christ Christ know it is imperfect. So what he's doing now is washing her by the washing of water by the word. You get my point? So they are liars among us. They are thieves among us. They are charlatans. They are sorcerers among us in the bride of Christ. So but the totality of everything is the bride of Christ. Now the bride of Christ we can say is ugly. It has been mixed. It has lost. It, she has lost her shape she's mixed she's dark she's not yet putting on the beautiful garment now the bridegroom is the one to permit you to talk to the bride that is those who talk to the bride are called the friend of the bridegroom are you understanding what i'm saying they are called the friend of the bridegroom but some of these guys who are talking for the bride of Christ and talking to the bride of Christ, they, don't, they are not friends of the bridegroom. They are just sympathizers of the bridegroom. They are not friends. Some of them are being hurt by the devils in the bride. But has the bridegroom given them permission to talk to his bride? Two things will take them out. Either the bridegroom himself or the spirit in charge of the perverted prophets that are in the bride they will not enjoy divine protection you understand what I'm saying do you know how many years they have been saying God will kill me the first time they say I will die for confronting the errors in the church it was 1997 second time was 98 Joshua people. but he himself he has died me I'm still here you, you know why because I have the permit Look at what we have. Okay, since I came to Kenya, there's, even when we were only three or four, I have never reduced the sound of the trumpet against the errors in the church. Why? I have the permit. You think if I don't have the permit, I'll still be here? People have to be careful. No? You understand what I'm saying? Jesus is so jealous of his bride. Look at the way he's jealous. His bride will steal. And you will catch the bride. Come on give the bride slap for stealing the bridegroom will come and beat you thoroughly for touching his bride hey my bride your bride stole you said in your word that people, yes i know my bride stole but why do you touch my wife bah! because of his love and affection for his bride after he beat you thoroughly he will not go and meet those that he gave the permit say go and talk to my bride that you stop stealing do you understand what I'm saying? That's the way he operates. 
Do you know why all these people are shouting on YouTube everywhere? Because they don't want to embrace loyalty. It is loyalty that will make you find your formation. Then you fight from your formation. They don't want to submit to anybody. I don't want to reveal my personal conversation with some of them. I have, I have conversed with some of them personally and I've warned them. These things you are doing. You are doing the right thing, but not the right way. When I sense that if I say anything, they'll come and do a video on me. I kept quiet. I didn't say. Are you understanding me? I didn't say anything. Because what? They will never understand me. They will think that I'm becoming perverse. Or maybe I'm shutting their mouth. I kept quiet. I said, let them learn through experience. They said, what I'm saying? Let them learn through experience. This army has formation. The Bible said they shall not break their rank. They march in formation. They shall not break their rank. The cry of the spirit has, is a formation in God's army. And the reason why none of our guys have had, have been any, have had any attacks because we are fighting within our formation. You get my point? And nobody can be brought down. None in the house. That is why I tell you, copy what I say. Put just the video clip is enough. But some guys, because there is no loyalty, they can't do it. Loyalty will make you obey such instructions. In fact, loyalty will even make you to do it without even being told. Without even being told. You see, what will sustain us and preserve us this end time is loyalty. It's not, not, it's loyalty. Purity is there, but you know that sometimes purity fails. When you grow weary, you begin to live in sin. Jesus will come and protect you out of his love. His blood speaks for you. But royalty, sorry, loyalty, if it does not exist, that can destroy your life in a moment. Are you understanding what I'm saying here? So whatever we are considering this week is one of the cardinal things in God's kingdom that will position us for impact without casualties. Impact without casualty. Our loyalty to God. There was one guy who came to me, he sat down. I can't remember his face now in my office and sat talking and said they are threatening him, whatever. I look at him, he doesn't have a church, he's attending. No pastor is answerable to. I said to myself, if I talk to him now, tomorrow I will appear on Facebook. Let me leave him. I left him. I just said, Okay, thank you. He said, I should be praying for you. I will. You don't need prayer, you need positioning. That is all you need positioning. There was a woman in the UK. She, 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 I saw something, but she loved us so much. And I, I just, oh, no, 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 this is wrong. I told her, I'm going to talk to you. But later I felt in my spirit, whatever I will say will not be understood. Before you know, they will do a video on me. So I kept quiet. With all sense of humility, we started this war. 1997 all these on our newcomers they don't even know what they don't even understand the war 1997 was when we started the war the man in lagos started it in 1996 sorry yes 1996 he started a year before god brought me into it the war of confronting error it was the first person to come up he said, he said, I just came back from Holland and I landed at the airport and they took me to, to the church and I, I was here in Sinago, Sinago, Sinago. That was TV Joshua. <laughs> Sinago, Sinago. I said, what is this? What, where did this one appear in Lagos? Sinago of Satan? He made only that statement alone. TV Joshua went quiet until Oya Kilomi came and empowered him. That man had apostolic authority. That is what you need to do these things. <laughs> that, is, that is what you need to do these things. Because when you have the permit, you have the authority. 